welcome to you as we move into this supplementary video to the series Living Purposefully in Your Very Own Story. At the end of Experience 30, there was a note that there would be this supplementary video. And here it is. And this is what I will be doing in this supplementary video. I will be giving the how and when of some ways to live purposefully. They're actually a summary of what we've been doing in the um, whole of the series, 1 to 29. Another thing that happens in this supplementary is that I will be par paralleling the epic journeying cycles with the nine-point Enneagram pattern of life growth cycles. And that pattern was actually used without using that name in experiences 21 to 29. And there will be some notes on how new energies come to birth through inner silences. Again, another way of summarising many experiences in the videos 1 to 30. And we will name yet once more the harvest of these inner silences that is a sense of inner freeing that comes to me in my skin as I live into my very unique epic journeying cycles. And they are there whether we know them, are aware of them or not. So here we are. Harvest of the Four Silences. We experience a deep harmony as we consciously engage with more than energy in living into our unique invitations to grow into our best and well beyond our dreamed of self through epic journeying cycles. And these three images are in different order now. So we start off with a sense of discomfort. We come to a sense of inner freeing at the end of one journeying cycle, and that's represented by the lily, which is open with gold in the middle. And the effect of every epic journeying cycle is that something new comes to birth. And the third image going from left to right is the epic journeying cycle image because when one is finished another will begin if it's not already begun. And the effect of these multiple recurring epic journeying cycles is to bring us to our true selves. Not just an awareness of it but the reality of our true self. And so I'm beginning by picking up Noel Davis's challenge in his poem, Slipping on Our Dancing Shoes. His challenge was, to life's invitations, are we bold enough to say yes? Now, we've been doing that in every video in little bits and pieces, one experience after another, one aspect after another, through experiences 1 to 30. So now in the supplementary video I'm giving a few ways that it can be done, gathering them all together. Most of these have already been in um, experiences that we've had that you've been invited to take part of from 1 to 30. So we did this first one in experiences 21 to 29 and I've called it here differently from in the experiences experiencing fabulous experiences fabs and we'll talk about the detail. We actually did it without that name in experiences 21 to 29. 
using body movement, image and pose to bypass old triggers, gathering together a few experiences in series two and series three. Integrating wisdom available by invoking observer self, right from experience one, in every video up to video 30, there have been multiple opportunities and invitations to you to be your observer self. This next one, developing unanswerable answers to be true to yourself, is a way to keep yourself in your own conviction, one of the silences, one of, a way to protect one of your silences. And the last one, we've mentioned several times, particularly in Series 3, establishing perspective through reality checks. And so now I will be moving through some hows and some whens, giving the information for each item in this listing. And so we move into specifics of how and when for each of these dot points. Fabs. So how do you engage with fabs? Harvest that you will experience experiences with a positive flavour. So how do you do it? You feel the feeling, any feeling especially strong feelings. You allow your body to express the feeling powerfully. We did this in experiences 21 to 29. And then you bring your body expression to a pose, if it's a positive feeling. Your body experience to a pose and then transform every uncomfortable aspect to a comfortable aspect, if it's a negative feeling. And lastly, you soak in how fabulous it feels in this last pose. And you remember it, the feeling and the pose. So that's the how. And so when would you use fabs? You, with your creativity and your experience, may find other ones these are ones that have come out of the experiences 1 to 30 that I'm naming here. When a strong negative feeling is holding all your inner attention, there are times when strong negative feelings for me just crowd out everything else. That would be a time when I would use this experience. Another time, when I have a sense that I need more of a supporting energy to move onward. And that happened to me today, that I felt anxious about presenting this particular supplementary video. And I invoked some supporting energy. And as you become conscious of an epic journeying cycle happening, and you're at the struggle part or the discomfort part, you may invoke a process that I will be presenting here later on. And when a particular stage of your epic journeying cycle needs support, maybe when you're in sense of real struggle, or maybe when you're feeling exceeding discomfort, or maybe when you're feeling a sense of freedom, don't feel guilty about it. Now I'm moving to the next way that you can slip on your dancing shoes. The item is using body movement, image or pose to bypass old triggers. How do you do it? When choosing to be in a new pattern, notice a body movement that happens spontaneously, e.g. your hands will unwind or your back will straighten or you feel a sense of lightness, or it's like when you're on a beach, or one of the nine poses in series three, etc. I'm giving an example. 
So, supposing that you felt imprisoned and you have a dream and the invitation is that in the dream is to invoke your more freedom part. You will probably notice that your back straightens or your hands unwind. It'll be unique to you what you do. For some people, I've noticed that it's a head comes up or a smile appears. There are many ways in which when we move from one experience to a new pattern, there will be body expressions unconsciously and spontaneously. So if you take note of what happens for you when you're in your new pattern, when you're moving from the old pattern to the new pattern, you'll be able to use that on the second point. Fix that spontaneous movement sense in your sensory memory so that you can return to it. And when the old pattern gets triggered, you can move to this body movement, which will save you arguing in your head. So when would you use this to pass an old, bypass an old trigger? When an old pattern is triggered, say to the old pattern energy, thank you, you have served me well. And I'm choosing to go with my new pattern energy noted above. Then in your inner landscape, move or turn to the energy or movement you noticed above. And then from this new place, act to respond to what the trigger was. There's another point. When you are experiencing an uncomfortable feeling and it won't go away, wrap the sense of the spontaneous energy and movement above around it. This reminds your conscious reality that this uncomfortable feeling is not all of your experience. These opposites can exist companionably side by side. And when that happens for you, it's a really good feeling. So we're on to the third way that you could slip on your dancing shoes, according to the videos, living purposefully into your very own story. How can you establish reality checks? Be your observer self by moving back from your assessment of something that disturbs you and or especially if it is a spontaneous interior pattern comment from your critical self or your judgmental self. We all have these. And then assess the reality from an objective stance, that is, beyond your emotional reaction and old pattern triggers. So when do you need, do you have a feeling that you need to establish perspective and want to um, engage and deal with it through a reality check? In a pause moment, if you notice a pull down energy, e.g. that was stupid, I'm not good enough, I never get it right, nobody likes me, etc., this is one time to do a reality check. So what's your reality check? Where did the energy come from? Is this really true? Is there other information within my experience system, in my sensory memory? This is a, another one. Maybe a nuancing of the first one, but still, I'm naming it as a different one. In a pause moment, when you notice words like why, should, try, hope, think, arising spontaneously, do a reality check for the real inner energy underneath that word. And I'm giving some examples. Often enough, the real inner energy underneath think 
is no. And let's just pause there for a moment. About something that you're moving forward to, use the phrase, I think I'll try harder. And see what happens inside you. And then repeat the process, I know I'll try harder. Feel the difference in the inner reaction within you. A second way to do a reality check around words. When you ask yourself and spontaneously it comes out, now why did this happen to me? Why am I always getting it wrong? Why, 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 why? You will never get comfort when you ask why. So every time, allow it to come up spontaneously, but every time you notice that you've asked why, go deeper and from a deeper place say, what is going on here? And you'll get a true, truer inner reality. And three other words that I'm making a comment about. Should, try and hope. They can conceal unrealistic boundaries. They're probably not realistic for what you can really do with who you are in your situation with your energy. So bring it back to who you are in your situation with your energy, leaving those words aside. And so we come to yet another way to slip on your dancing shoes. And how do you do it? Well, another way is to invoke your observer self. And so how do you do it? I'm making some comments about the possibility of your doing it and how it works in our systems. First point, everyone has the capacity to engage with observer self. Points to note, though. The capacity is not spontaneous. You actually have to make a space in your never-ending pattering for your observer self to be invoked. And when you do invoke your observer self, this practice means that we get better at engaging with your observer self and keeping out the critical self and the judgmental self and being able to tell the difference. And my last point about observer self, engaging with our observer self never becomes automatic. If we want to engage with our observer self, we have to integrate pauses into our life. So how can we integrate the wisdom available by invoking observer self? When? Choices can nurture inner growth and balance when our observer self is involved in conscious pausing. And a second point that I'm making here Each of the 30 videos in this series, Experience Living Purposefully into Your Very Own Story, provides several opportunities for pause choices that engage observer self. Now this is a new one that I didn't use. Maybe the basis of it uh, was in the 30 videos, Um, but it's about the second silence about standing your own ground. So I've called it developing unanswerable answers to be true to yourself. So as you've worked through the 30 videos, there are ways in which you've become aware and been drawn to know who your true self is. So how? Be in touch with your truth unfiltered. Second point, let what you'd like to do surface unfiltered. 
that may not be what you would be able to do in the reality of life, but you need to let the feeling come to expression. You might like to have squinty eyes and spit out fire at someone. And if that's the way you really are, let it be there unfiltered. And then you explore how you could do this in an inspiring way, leaving no room for comeback, and yet it's true to yourself. So the spitting out fire will get transformed in arriving at this different way. When? I'm doing some whens and giving some examples in the whens. So when? When you know that a response from another is going to be negative. And the example. Someone is finding fault with you. Well, the trouble with you is you're always angry. You're always a wet blanket. And if that's not the way you feel inside, you might respond. I respect your opinion. However, that's not how I feel inside. Um, The example would have been a different one from the one that I gave. So uh, maybe someone said, you ought to go to the gym every week. The response could be, I respect your opinion. However, not going to the gym is the right choice for me at this time. So you are cementing, affirming how you really are inside yourself and not letting that negative energy in to put you off balance. A second time, when you might use an unanswerable answer. You need to be in touch with your strong negative feeling, and at the same time, you don't want to load that feeling back onto another. For example, someone is calling you hurtful names, and you know that these names are not true for you. A possible response is, I hear you saying and repeat what they've said about me. But you know, inside me, that's not true. So again, I'm repeating what I did in the end of Experience 30. Naked, one of the silences. And that brings out of the epic journeying cycle, discomfort and setting out. And both of those, the harvest is an invitation to expand our perception of reality. The second, third and fourth step of epic journeying cycles are struggles and help. And there are two harvests of inner silences that will serve us well as we live through these parts of epic journeying cycles. With standing outside pressure by standing in our own truth. And when we're in touch with and express our feelings, we will release pressure within and will be open to receive inner help. Great harvesting points. And the fifth and sixth stage of epic journeying is letting something go and new birth comes into its place. And the silence is through being observer self and listening to the invitations that come to us through tingles and clangs and niggles and nudges that we become aware of the bigger picture. And so our perceived and our actual reality integrate And there's help around both from inside us and from outside us. What a wonderful harvest of the four silences that parallel the epic journeying cycle stages. In series three, we had experiences 21 to 29. And from number one through to number nine, 
I have put what we did in experiences 21 to 30. Now, they actually fit a nine point cycle of life presented by the Enneagram. We don't have to do the Enneagram. I'm in just putting it in one diagram so we can see what happens. So I'm revising what we did in experience 21 to 30, 29 about allowing our emotional intelligence to have a say. The first step is that somewhere in our inner sanctuary we dream of change. And it usually starts by some sense of discomfort or vague sense of things aren't right. And then that increases until we become acutely aware of discomfort and struggle. And it grows and it won't go away and it can stay there for a long time if we don't deal with it. And maybe we're meant to stay with it a long time before we're invited to deal with it. And then eventually we get the courage to set out. And when we set out, a new do pattern strengthens in our sensory memory pathways. We will still have senses of struggle. If you remember, the discomfort picture at that time was quite big and very hazy and very uncomfortable. And then as our new pattern strengthens, our new sensory memory pathways strengthen, we'll start to feel a new set of feelings which is satisfying. And then as that satisfying grows, we get the urge to push forward into the new territory. That means the old pattern is losing a whole lot of its power. And then we begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel start feeling more freedom and more a sense that it's right to move on. And towards the end of the epic journeying cycle, you can stand firmly in your new pattern. It might never become as automatic as the old pattern, but you can stand firmly in it and you won't look back to the old pattern. And when the old pattern turns up, you'll know it's not right for you. And lastly, something new comes to birth. And with that something new, there's a deeper sense of inner freeing and harmony. And that pattern is repeated over and over in our lives. Whether we are consciously aware of it or not, it is there. I thank you for having been a part of the whole series living purposefully into your very own story. And I've been delighted to share with you this summary list of how we can slip on our dancing shoes, how and when.